So I want to take you today to our, our a message from God, and I'll just invite you to bow our head, your head right where you are. Close your eyes as we invite God's Holy Spirit into our presence. Father, we thank you because you're so good. You're good, Lord. You're amazing. You're loving. You're kind. Lord, thank you for families. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of family. Thank you, Lord, for children, for, 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 for the wives, for the husbands. Thank you for the love that comes from God that, um, that you pour out into our lives, dear God. We just want to praise you and give you glory and honor. Today, as we study your word, bless us. As we study your word, give us your Holy Spirit and inspire us, dear Lord, to receive a message from heaven, a message from above. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that I've learned, or I'm, I'm learning in the experience of faith, experience of Christian walk, is that you don't always get what you ask for. You do not always get what you ask for. You don't always get it at the time that you ask for it. As a matter of fact, there are some things in life you will just not get. But you have to be happy with it. You have to be contented, you know. Um, the Apostle Paul speaks in the word. It says, he says, because of the revelation that has been given unto me, he says, there was a, there was, there's a thorn in my flesh that is, is just killing me. He says, it's like an angel from, from, from hell, he says, that comes to buffet me. And he says, I pray to God three times that he may deliver me from this, from this punishment, from this pain, he says. But God only said to him, my servant, Paul, my grace is sufficient to you. In other words, Paul prayed that God would deliver him from this, from this uh, thorn in his flesh, but it was not done. God just said, I'm going to give you grace. I'll give you grace to endure the pain. I'll give you grace to endure the, the difficulty. I'll, I'll give you grace to, to be able to overcome the, whatever you're going through. But this is going to be for your blessing. This is going to be for your good. This is going to build you up. So my dear friend, there are things that we pray for that we may not necessarily get when we pray for them. We may have to wait for some of those. But what God is really doing is He is building your faith. He is giving you strength. He is giving you His grace to endure whatever circumstance you are going into. There are times in our lives when we prayed for something for many, many years. I could still remember my parents praying. And they had this one prayer. They prayed for as long as I could remember until they both went to be, well, they both passed away. Sorry about that. But they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. But I can tell you something, my friend. I know that their prayers has been answered. I know that God has answered their prayers in a way that even though they didn't see it here on earth, someday in heaven, they will praise God for their answered prayers. Today in the book of Luke, I want to take you to a, a, a parable that Jesus gave about praying, about waiting, about what we can expect when we pray. In the book of Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, it begins by saying, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. I want to just take you here a minute and, and, and try to understand what Jesus is saying to us. He says, he spoke a parable to them to give them an illustration to help them to understand that we should always pray. And never lose heart. In other words, just hold on to what you're asking. If you're praying for something, don't let go. When he says not lose heart, it means don't let go. Don't, don't, don't slacken up on what you're praying. Just keep holding on. Just keep asking. Just keep believing. Keep trusting. Because God is working both on your faith and on your answer. And here we go with the parable. He says, there was a certain city... A judge who did not fear God nor regard men. It's, this was a tough judge, right? He, he, didn't, he, he was not honoring God and he didn't care about men. He was a rough, tough guy. No one could get through him. I, I can imagine he told his secretaries, don't let anybody in. I don't want to hear anything. I'm going to go and do my job. I don't, I, I don't care about nothing. Jesus describes this judge as a very difficult person to deal with. And then he says... There was a certain widow in a city, and she came to him 
And she said to him, get justice for me from my adversary. Now, I want to highlight here one thing. She came to him. She came to the judge because she needed his help. She came to the judge because of her own need, her necessity brought him to the judge. Even though she knew the reputation that he had, even though she knew that, how, that he was a person that may not even listen to her, even though she knew all about him, she still came to the judge. My dear friend, she came to him. We must come to Jesus. We must bring our troubles and trials to him. A beautiful hymn that I remember singing even when I was growing up. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. This widow came to this judge in spite of knowing that she may not be heard. But she came to him. She said, Give, please have mercy on me. I need your help. The Bible says, and he would not for a while. In other words, he ignored her. And he kept ignoring her. And he ignored her. She went one day. She went the following day. She went the following day. And the following day, a week passed, a month passed. And who knows, maybe a year passed. But this woman continued going to the judge because she needed his help. She knew that if she cons consistently went to him and asked him and, and, and continued presenting her case to him, something was going to happen. But it says he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, and this is, I love this, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. She kept on pleading to the judge. And one day he said, you know what? I'm seriously getting tired of this woman coming to me. I am sick of seeing this woman every single day. Even though I have never had a communication with her, my secretaries are tired of telling her, go home, he's not going to listen to you. But there's something about this woman that called my attention. There's something about her and it's her persistence. There's something about her that's just annoying me and I'm going to get rid of her by giving her what she's asking for. <laughs> you, know, you know, my dear friends, it's not an easy task when you have to keep going and re repeating your same prayers over and over and over again. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're praying, you feel like, yeah, I prayed about this enough. If God wants to answer me, he'll answer me. And that's when we give up. That is when we stop asking. But the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. He doesn't say ask once. He says, keep asking. It's a continual verb. It just says, ask and ask again and ask again and just keep asking. Because God is working on your faith. He is building you up. It's not just about receiving. It is about building up your faith in trusting in Him. You see, when you go to Jesus... And when you tell him your problems, and when you tell him your sorrows, and when you tell him the things that make you happy, and when you present your requests to him, you are coming into a closer connection with him. You are coming into a closer communion with him. And when we come into a close communion with him, we enter into a, into a place of, of peace. We enter into a zone of peace. And our faith is built. And it continues to be built. So my friend, don't stop seeking God. Don't stop presenting to him your prayer requests. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Verse 7, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? And then it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And then he asked a question. Nevertheless, will the Son of Man come? When the Son of Man come, will he really find faith on the earth? And here it is. This is why I'm telling you. It's all about faith. 
It's not necessarily about asking and receiving. The asking and receiving is only for the building of our faith. But then he ends this illustration by saying, when the Son of Man comes, when Jesus comes, will he find faith? So whatever is happening in your life right now, if you feel ignored, if you feel that God is not answering your prayer, remember that the greatest goal that God has for your life is not to just give you what you're asking for, is not just to solve your problems, but to build your faith in Him, for you to grow spiritually, for you to be a better Christian, a better person. You see, if God gave us everything that we asked for, we will be spoiled. We live in a society right now that we want everything right at the fingertips. You see, technology has brought us to a point where everything is instant. Even, you know, the, 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 the stuff that we eat, we want the food to be cooked right away. We want it to be done right away. If you go into a drive through and you, you, there's a long line, you probably choose to go to another drive through or not to go at all because you don't want to spend those extra moments. You see, life right now is, is everything is instant, everything in his hurry, but God has a different timing. God's timing is different. He's not rushed by your urgency. He's not rushed by your, by, by, because you, you think you want it now. Think about your children. Think about your children. If you're a parent or when, remember when you were small, you come to your parents and you say, hey, I want a car right now. You say, wait a minute, I'm going to give it to you for Christmas. No, I want it now. <laughs> I want it right now. You, you just say, no, it's going to be for Christmas because you don't want to spoil them, right? You, wanna, you, wanna give them, you want them to learn to be patient. God is working on our character, my friend. And if you have not received that which you're asking for, remember that God is working on your Christian experience. I want to take you to a story in the book of Genesis of one of the um, very important characters that covers a long uh, portion, a great portion of the book of Genesis. His name was Jacob. Jacob was a twin born to Isaac and, and Rebekah. The Bible says that when he was born, uh, Esau, his brother, came out before him. But when he came out, he came holding on to his brother's foot, ankle. And he, was, he came out, and interestingly, when they grew, you know, the, the, the tradition was that the eldest son was going to receive the blessings of the father, and he was also receive the birthright. He was going to have... The, the priority and in inheritance and everything else. But he also had the responsibility to be the, the example for those who came after. He also had the spiritual responsibility as well as the blessings. Esau, for some reason, didn't really um, appreciate the blessings that his father was going to give him. And one day, while he was so hungry... He came in, and, and, and Jacob was cooking something nice, and he said to Jacob, give me some food. And Jacob, who was really interested in receiving what the father was going to give to them, he said, I will give you food if you give me your birthright. And Esau's like, ah, yeah, whatever. You go ahead and take all of that, and just give me food. That's all I want. Give me food, and I'll, 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 I'll eat. You see, he was kind of the instant guy, right? He was not interested in the spiritual aspects of life. He just wanted what he wanted, and he wanted there and then. But Jacob wanted something greater. Jacob's attention, his, his passion, his love was beyond what was the temporary things. So they made the deal, and he ate the food and gave it to his brother, moved on, fast, far, fast track, a couple of years. He forgot all about this, and now the time has come. Isaac is older, he's, he's almost blind now, and he says, now it's time for me to bless my oldest son. Even though Isa, Isaac knew that his oldest son was not appreciative of the blessing, even though he knew that his oldest son was not really interested in the spiritual blessing, but he still was going to do it. He still was going to bless him. He was still going to give it to him in spite of knowing that he was not going to take good care of it. So he said to his son, go out, cook something, um, get a, get, um, kill an animal, cook it for me the way that you do it. Apparently he was a very good cook. He was a good hunter. And then you come back, bring it to me, and I will bless you. Esau went out. Rebekah heard about it. She told e Jacob, he said, Jacob, this is your opportunity. You are going to go in. I'm going to cook you something great. I'm gonna go, you can go into your father and tell him that you're Esau and, and take the birthright 
by deception. So they made up a plan, and he went into his father, even though his father didn't believe it at first, but then he believed it, and he said he blessed Jacob. Jacob came out of there with a blessing, and when Esau came back, he realized that it had been taken from him. He was so angry, he promised to kill his brother. Now here's where everything happens. Rebekah told Jacob that he was going to have to leave because his brother was really angry and he was going to kill him. Jacob packs his stuff and starts a journey leaving his home, leaving his mother whom he loved very much and she loved him, leaving his father, leaving his part of inheritance that he would have had, leaving everything behind, going to an unknown land because of the sin he had committed, because of lying, because of deception. And now he is leaving afraid, scared, with nothing in his hand, only a staff. He leaves running from his brother because his brother has threatened to kill him. With a guilty conscience, with fearful thoughts, running to an unknown land, feeling like he had been forsaken by God. And the Bible says that as he left and the night fell, he got tired and he fell asleep. And in his sleep, God showed up to Jacob. And he had a dream that night of a ladder that, that connected between earth and heaven. And angels coming up and down through the ladder. And there God presented himself to Jacob and, and promised that he would be with him. And he gave him a promise of deliverance, of forgiveness, a promise that would go on with him for the rest of his life. Jacob then reached the land where his, uh, his family were, Laban. He met Rachel. He fell in love with Rachel. And, and you know the other story. Then um, his, his father-in-law gave him Leah instead of Rachel. <clears throat> he had to work seven years. And then he worked another seven years for Rachel, whom he loved he spent 20 years there with Laban. 20 years. And he had 12 sons, 11 sons while he was there actually. And while he was there, Laban cheated him 10 times, changing his wages. He saw much pain while he was there. He, 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 while he was there, he even felt the guilt of the sin for 20 long years, even though God had forgiven him, he continued feeling guilty for what he had done. And now, there comes a point where he feels like his father-in-law doesn't want him there anymore. There comes a point where he feels that like his father-in-law is, is turning against him. And he feels uncomfortable. He feels that he needs to leave from there. So God came to him and said, Jacob, it's time to leave. And I want to just, just make a point here, you know. Sometimes the circumstances around you will tell you it's time to change. Sometimes the circumstances around you will, will sometimes force you to make a change. Either to leave from a place and go to somewhere else or change your life or change your friends or change your surroundings. Sometimes we have to realize that God is speaking to us through the, through the friends that are around you, through people are around you. Maybe you lost a job and God is saying to you, you know what, it's time to leave to go to somewhere else. My friend, a lot of times we stick around, we stay here, even we stay in a place even knowing that God is telling us to move. Sometimes people stay where they are simply because it's comfortable there, because it's secure there. You know, I don't want to leave because I have all kinds of good things here and, and, and I don't know what's going to happen over there. My dear friends, Jacob knew it was time to leave because surroundings were, were getting uncomfortable. And God came and, and he approved and he said, Jacob, it's time to go. Now, Jacob could have stayed there. He could have remained there. J Laban was older than him. He was probably going to die very soon. He was going to have his inheritance. He was going to stay there. Everything was be good. But Jacob wanted to follow the instructions of his God. So God said, it's time to go. Jacob packed up. And left without Laban even knowing. 
Laban then caught up and came and he, you know, they had this whole argument. Why did you leave? Why didn't you tell me uh, I was going to let you go and everything else? But finally they reconciled. Laban went back home and Jacob continued his journey. On this journey, now he was going to go back home. He was going to have to meet his brother again. The guilt that was inside of him, the fear, is my brother still angry with me? Is he going to kill me? What's going to happen? As he was going toward his, his, his homeland, as he was going back to meet his brother, he was afraid, he was guilty. So what he did was, he set his family ahead of him, and he remained in a place all alone. And here's what I want to take you to an amazing experience in the life of Jacob that I believe is going to be a blessing to you. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, it says, Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. I just want to highlight that he was left alone. And when he was left alone, a man started wrestling with him. See, he stayed alone that night because he wanted to talk to God. He wanted to, 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 to just take out all of this guilt and pain that he was feeling, the fear that he had of meeting his brother once again. So he wanted to spend that night in prayer. I want you to know, though, he had been forgiven by God, but he still remained scared and guilty for the sin he had committed. He was left alone that night. And a man wrestled with him. And he wrestled from midnight until the sun was coming up. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, it says that the man touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now this must have been a painful experience, my friend. Think about it. He is all alone. In his mind, he is fighting against an enemy. He probably thought that maybe this is one of my brother's soldiers as well. So he was putting everything out there. He's fighting for his life. He is trying to, to survive fighting against an unknown person. But something happened. The Bible says that this man with, the, with, the, with his fingers touched his hip and his hip became out of place. What a pain. Think about it. No, he doesn't have the strength that he had before. No, he, 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 is, he is disabled, but he continues to fight. He continues to hold on to him. And this is when he realizes, and it says in verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said to him, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He realized this was not just an enemy. This was not just an ordinary man. He was fighting against a celestial being, the captain of the hosts of heaven, Jesus himself. He had come to wrestle with Jacob. And there was one thing that was laying on his mind. It wasn't necessarily the physical pain, but the spiritual pain. Am I forgiven? Has God forgiven me for my sin? And that night, God came to him to deliver him spiritually. Even though it caused him much pain, he, was now, he now felt free from guilt. He now felt that God had blessed him. And he says, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I, I, I want what you have. Please bless me. I'm not going to let go. And it says, so he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, which means liar, supplanter, deceiver. And it says in verse 28, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but it shall be called Israel. Why? For you have wrestled with God and with men and have prevailed. That night, my friend, Jacob received a special blessing from God. That morning, after wrestling, after holding on, after being perseverant, he received a blessing that he had been looking for for many, many years. And he says, and you shall seek me, Jeremiah, and find me when you shall search me with all your heart. I want to tell you today, my friend, even though God has promised you to never leave you, to never forsake you. Even though God has promised to forgive you, it is our part to hold on to God until we receive His blessing. 
So many times we go to God in prayer and we just run and kneel down and get up and we're gone. We, we don't wait to receive that blessing. We open the Bible, we, we read anything that comes up there, we do not receive God's blessing. We must be like, like, like Jacob and say to him, Lord, I'm going to stay here until I receive your blessing. I'm going to stay on my knees until I, you bless me, until my heart melts, until the tears come from my eyes. I'm not going to get up from here until I receive, until I enter into your presence. I can tell you sometime, my friend, you, you kneel in prayer and your mind is, goes everywhere. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking about your children. You're thinking about uh, your problems. And, and, and there's no concentration in prayer. My advice to you is stay there. My advice to you is don't get up from there. A lot of times you're praying and, and something tells you, you know, you're, you're, God is not even listening to you. Your prayers aren't going as high as the ceiling. Sometimes you're praying there and you feel it, you're wasting your time. I can tell you, my friend, when you go to God in prayer or study His Word, the enemy is right there trying to tell you you're wasting time. He is right there trying to distract you. He's right there trying to keep you away from going into the presence of God so that you do not prevail with Him. But it is then that we need to stay there. It is then that we need to stay on our knees. It is then that we need to stay in the Word until God is able to work through our, our, our mind, the cloudness of our mind, and come into our heart and subdue our heart, and we can finally feel that we are in the presence of God. Many times you go to God in prayer, and as you kneel down, as you sit down, as you lie down, as you're praying, whatever, whatever circumstance it is, you do not enter immediately into, into His throne, but you have to go through so many things, just like, just like in the time of Jesus. You know, when the woman came to Jesus, she had, a, she had a problem for 12 years. She had been sick. She had to go through the crowd, and, and they would not allow her to until she finally, without giving up, she went and she touched the hem of His garment because she did not give up. My friend, Jesus is there waiting for us. The Bible says, you will seek me and you will find me, but you must search with all your heart. You see, it is His Holy Spirit who is calling you. The Bible says He knocks at the door and He wants to come in. He wants to come in, but He also is waiting for us to want Him to come in. The Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fed. You must hunger and thirst. You must desire the presence of God. He will not just come in superficially. He wants you to have a deep hunger. The Bible says, like a deer panteth for the rivers of water, so my soul pants for you, dear God. The Bible says, my soul thirst for you in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. I want you. I desire you. I need you. I want you in my life. That shall be our prayer every single morning. And stay there until God blesses us. Hold on to Him until He blesses. You know, we get, we get accustomed of living life without the Holy Spirit, of living life without God's presence, of living life without His blessings. But it's enough. We need to go in the presence of God and hold on until He blesses. Whatever you're praying for as well, my friend, whatever you're seeking from him, don't let go. I've read a quotation some time ago that says, we let go too soon of the arm of God. Don't let go. Jesus gave that illustration, that parable of the evil judge, not that God doesn't want to hear you, and not that he gets tired of you coming to him. God never gets tired of you coming to him. He is always with his arms open wide waiting for you. He is always, the Bible says his ears are attentive to our cry. David says, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined his ears to me and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of the miry clay, out of the horrible pit. He put my feet on a rock. He established my footsteps and he put a new song in my mouth. He praises to the Lord. In other words, God wants you to come to Him, but He is building your faith. He is increasing your faith. He is building your character. He wants you to know Him better. He wants you to know Him as who He really is. He wants you to have a special connection with Him. My dear friend, don't give up. Don't let go. If you're a person that has been a Christian for, for a long time, but you feel empty, you feel like God has abandoned you. You feel like he has forsaken you. God has a special word for you today as well, my friend. He says, but Zion said, God has forsaken me. And he says, can a woman forget her baby who is still feeding from the breast? He says, even 
she may forget her child, but I will never forget you. I have you inscribed in the palm of my hand. Your walls are always before me. God says, a mother may forget her child, but I will never forget you. When we come to him, he hears us. He says, seek me and find me. I'm there. You can find me. I can forgive your sins. I can cleanse you. I can change your circumstances. I can bless you. I can answer your prayer, but you must not give up. You must not stop coming to Jesus. Continue that journey, and you will find rest. You will find blessing, my friend. Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is with his arms open wide saying, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God wants to give you rest. Never give up. Jesus has you in the palm of his hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those who are discouraged at this time. I want to pray for someone who has stopped praying because you have felt like God doesn't answer your prayers. I want to pray for someone who has been praying, but, but you have lost faith in Jesus. You have lost faith faith in prayer. You have been praying for healing and there has been no healing. You have been praying for a son or a daughter and there has been no answer. Instead, it's getting worse. You've been praying for your husband and things are getting worse. You've been praying for your wife and it's just been getting worse. I want to pray for you, my friend, because I believe that we serve a God that is mighty and powerful. I believe that we serve a God that is right there listening, answering, and he wants to build you up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop asking. God is working in your life. I want to pray for someone who is sick today, someone who is discouraged, someone who has given up hope in church, in religion, in the Bible, in prayer. I want to pray that God's Spirit may come into your life, that you may open your heart to God and say, Lord, I want to start all over again. I want a new beginning. I have given up on you. I have turned my back on you. I have stopped praying. I have stopped going to church. I have stopped reading the Bible. But I want to start all over again. I want to pray for you, my friend. You know, in the, in the coming, coming weeks, we are going to have some amazing baptisms here. In, in, June, Ju, in the end of June, we have a baptism. In July 11th, we have an amazing young person who has decided to give their life to Jesus. And I want to tell you, dear friend, that if you have felt the Holy Spirit, if you have felt, felt God speaking to your heart, accept Him. Open the door. Jesus says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If you open the door, I'm going to come in. I will come in. And we're going to have a feast together. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, today, Lord, as Jesus gave us an illustration to don't give up on prayer, to don't stop asking as we've been reminded of Jacob, Lord, how he told the angel, he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Today, oh God, I'm praying for maybe someone has stopped believing in you. Maybe someone has stopped praying because nothing works. They prayed and prayed and there has been no answer, Lord. Someone is praying. Someone, Lord, has given up on church. Church has no solutions. Church has no answer. Church is just another place with all kinds of defects. Maybe someone has, has given up on themselves. Maybe someone has given up on, 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 on Jesus. Dear God, today I want to pray a special blessing upon them. I pray that your Holy Spirit may reach out there, God, that you may send an angel and bring them out of their prison. That you may send your angel there, God, and, and relieve them, release them from the chains of bondage of lack of faith, of doubt, of unbelief, of fear, of guilt. Lord, may your power be released on your people today, O oh God. I pray for each one who is watching this, this service today. There's someone, Lord, who has lost hope. There's someone who has dropped into a pit of anxiety and fear and guilt. I pray there, God, that they may look up, look to you, and receive deliverance from you there, God. As David said, he waited patiently for you, and you delivered him. You brought him up. You cleaned him up. You put his feet on a rock. I pray that that be a blessing and an answer to someone here today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen.